Uh, well, there are some uh, significantly new things in Intel's 45 nanometer technology. Uh, we've uh, developed a technology that uses uh, high K plus metal gate transistors. <laughs> this is the biggest set of transistor changes in, in now more than 40 years. We changed the uh, uh, the gate insulator, the gate oxide, from silicon dioxide, which has been used forever, to a, a, a new high K material with uh, low leakage uh, properties. And we also changed the silicon gate electrode, uh, which has been used for about 40 years now, to uh, special metal uh, gate electrode materials. So this combination of a uh, high K dielectric plus uh, metal gate electrodes, uh, those are the big changes on, on Intel's process. The combination of uh, high K dielectric plus metal gate electrode is providing both lower leakage, uh, both the leakage, uh, lower leakage through the gate oxide, as well as uh, lower leakage from source to grain, and also providing uh, significant transistor performance improvements. So these uh, transistors are, are more than 20% faster than our own uh, industry-leading 65 nanometer. Transistor. Either provide a, a higher operating frequencies, or if they operate at the same frequency as before, they can provide much lower leakage. Well, I've, I've been attending conferences and uh, looking at uh, what other companies in the industry are publishing in terms of uh, their explorations uh, into uh, IK and metal gate transistors. And what I've seen is that they are considerably behind Intel. They've not demonstrated uh, uh, large arrays or, or transistors that uh, uh, can even match our 65 nanometer transistor performance. And of course, no company has, has uh, yet to demonstrate uh, working microprocessors the way Intel has. So I think uh, Intel has uh, more than a lead, uh, more than a year lead, uh, probably more than a two-year lead in uh, high-K metal gate technology. We've been uh, using 193 drive for uh, uh, a few generations, including our 65 nanometer generation, and Intel has found a way to extend its use uh, for the uh, into the uh, 45 nanometer generation. And we're doing that by by using a, a novel uh, mass making techniques and uh, um, a special uh, uh, layout design. We had the 32 nanometers, uh, that may be a little bit uh, too much of a stretch for uh, dry lithography. Uh, so uh, immersion lithography is one of the new options we're considering for that next generation. I think uh, uh, the 32 nanometer generation, even if it uses immersion lithography, uh, will still be approximately two years after uh, uh, the 45 nanometer generation. Uh, many generations. In lithography, uh, you have a, a stepper that uh, 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 shines the, the patterned light onto the surface of the wafer, and there's a, an air gap between the surface of the wafer and, and the bottom of the lens. Um, what's new about immersion is that they add a liquid, they add water in between the bottom of the lens and the top surface of the wafer. This helps to improve the resolving capability of that tool. But it, it does come with uh, uh, at more expense and some other risk for, for defects and other manufacturing problems. But it's a, a promising technique for future generations. Years ago, that we made the decision, yeah, not only must we do high-K metal gate, but we felt that we could do it. So that, that knowledge, that confidence uh, allowed us to, to make that early commitment and, and now demonstrate these uh, leadership results. Right. Well, 2003 is when our research group uh, first uh, showed that they had made some uh, uh, very good uh, high-K metal gate transistors. Uh, it was maybe about a year later that we finally uh, decided internally, yep, we can make this, we can commit our 45 nanometer process uh, to these uh, very revolutionary high-K metal gate transistors.